KKHT wants you to meet three of the classiest guys in real estate. I am Chris Kelso, the maestro of mortgage. I am Rob Cook, the godfather of real estate. And I'm Joe Orsack, the king of credit swing. And together, we're the, the real, real estate, estate Rat Pack. Pack. Much like us, real estate right now is smoking hot. So whether it's buying, selling, or owning, you need to check out the Real Estate Rat Pack. They're here to take your calls and answer your questions live. Call now, one 800 808 548 and now the real estate rat pack good morning good morning, good morning. how is everybody this morning hopped up on coffee and ready to go <laughs> absolutely it's been you know it's been it's a beautiful morning this morning we got we got some rain earlier in the week and just beautiful day today i thought i was gonna wake up to storms you know my little smartphone which isn't so smart was saying it's gonna storm tomorrow and today what <laughs> yeah so. i know we got a cold front coming well i'll tell you what it's not storming it's beautiful inside we've got a great show planned for today we, we do, have I'm everything about new home Homes Houston, new homes going on, and you know, and, and it's a lot of fun. We have some great individuals in the studio as well, you know, and it, it'll, it'll be a really good show today. Yeah, well, I'm very excited about this. We got some, uh, got one of the icons in the building industry, David Powers, is with us today, and I believe that you were responsible for getting him here. In fact, I think you picked him up. For Technically sure. speaking, yes, I think literally speaking, literally yes. picked him up, <laughs> so he couldn't back out. So uh, anyway, uh, welcome, Dave. We're really excited about having you here. We also have uh, with us today Matthew Gertis, who is a divisional vice president. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I just demoted you. Divisional president for president. Perry Homes, and Gayla Gayton, who is the lead of the top mark team from Keller Williams. Welcome, though. Absolutely. Let's, well, you know, let's start off with David. You mentioned an icon. It's always important. I, I definitely agree. David, thanks a lot for being on board today. Thank you for inviting me, Chris. Oh, well, it's our pleasure. You know, let us know a little bit about what's going on with Homes by David Powers today. Well, really, uh, after the downturn in the market, we kind of took a different approach because we have to have a niche in the market. And one of the things I did during the downturn is went around and met with 55 different home buyers that I had built homes with over for the last 20 years, sat down at their breakfast table and said, if I were to build a new home for you today, what things would you like to see different? And if you look at all of our product lineups, they reflect those changes. Those changes would be like media rooms on the first floor, not on the second floor. There were 27 of the 55 that I'd built real nice medias on the second floor that All 27 of them said, build a media room on the first floor closer to the kitchen. Because after about six months of ownership, we got tired of running up and down the stairs. So that's one. They weren't going down to get food down there. That makes perfect sense. The other is, from a cultural standpoint, uh, parents with children want to have all of the entertainment areas on the first floor, not areas for children to entertain on the second floor, kind of in the bedroom zone where it broadens out. So they that was another change. Uh, In suite baths with every bedroom, we have a separate bathroom for every bedroom because if you talk to the parents and you talk to the kids for the little bit of value that they end up spending to get that bathroom, they eliminate a lot of turf fights for who gets the mirror first. Uh, yeah, who gets the bathroom, <laughs> right. <clears throat> so, Mom, he's been in the bathroom too long. Get him out of there. <laughs> and then the other thing is really what we call uh, whole home pricing. And We used to have a much bigger design center as a part of our operation. We still have a pretty good size design center, but what we did is we listened to what the buyer said, and the buyer said, you know, when we came in to buy a home from you, we we agreed to a price, and then the following week, one or the other of us, and sometimes both of us would go in, and we'd realize that we'd need to spend another eighty or 90000 to get your home the way we want to get it. So now we have what we call whole home pricing, where every 30 days we go back in and look at what the... Home buyers are selecting as their choices, and we and make that a standard feature. So when buyers come in, they really come in and purchase a home with all the wood flooring, the tile flooring, and everything inclusive, the travertine, whatever the case might be. And then when they go to the design center, it's more of a pick out the selection rather than pick out the selection and the price. So when they leave our office, very seldom do they spend any additional money from what they enter the end of the purchase. So I kind of identified some of the things that people are wanting. I know a lot of people like in the outdoor kitchens and things like that. You see a lot of that for, for their lifestyles. Big covered patios, outdoor kitchens, what we call courtyard homes, where you walk into a front courtyard as well as the back courtyard. In our Monteleone at Bellaterra, we have uh, five of those type of plans, and they're very, very popular. And for our listeners out there, tell them where Bellaterra is. Okay, if you were to go out the West Park Tollway, just beyond the 99, there's a roadway that goes to the south that's called Katie Gas and takes you right into the neighborhood. And it's a master plan of 1,866 acres that's doing very well. And t- what's the price point? Our price point in there is about 450 to 700. We are getting ready to open up a new lifestyle courtyard product that goes from about 310 to about 390. 
And about what size lot would somebody expect to get in that courtyard series? In the courtyard series in uh, Monteleone, the lot is 82 by 130 to 135 deep. And in the uh, lifestyle courtyard, they're 55s by 130. So where those be a zero lot line or patio home lots? Or? Well, they're not really. They're, the way I come up with the lifestyle courtyard was way back at Lakes on Eldridge South. I developed a product in there, and it worked out very well. So we kind of retrieved those plans and did it again. But they have a normal side yard on each side, but you enter through a courtyard in the front. One of the things about courtyard homes that people don't realize that normally what you pay in air-conditioned space that you pay for up front if you're paying $100 a square foot is the foyer of the home. The courtyard home brings you more into the center of the floor plan, and it eliminates spending that money for the courtyard. So you typically are saving 200 to 250 square feet, so that's twenty five to $30,000. Wow. that you're saving that you would otherwise pay for in expense because most homes are priced based upon air-conditioned space. So if you look at an appraisal, it's going to reflect air-conditioned space, so many dollars per square foot. When you have a non-courtyard home, you have a couple 300 square feet of foyer that you're paying for that you just get to pay taxes on, clean, et cetera. And it doesn't give you the natural light that the courtyard yeah, Well, I, I like courtyard able. entries and, uh, you know, one of the greatest things to do is go to New Orleans and sit in those courtyards and, you know, maybe, you know, sip on a little mimosa or something <laughs> like that. But courtyards have a very nice, intimate, outdoor, entertaining type of function. Well, yeah. and that's what I was going to say. It's the ability to walk in and be able to have sort of a built-in entertainment center as well, mm-hmm. you know, an area that, you know, most of the time in a, in a home, you're going to congregate to the middle of the part of that home. So the, as you mentioned, that courtyard, you sort of walk in, you've got a nice little entertainment area and a nice little receiving area. You know, the other thing, David, that I think is really interesting is you also do a lot of build on your own lots. You've actually taken a lot of what you've do, done over the years and are doing right now and do build on your own lots as well. Is that correct? Yeah, well, it's like Gayla and I were talking about all during the downturn. The staff was limited with what you could afford. I took care of a lot of the warranty calls, so I've always went to all my closings. I think I went to... I'll vouch for that. I actually, <clears throat> he, he showed up for the closing I had with him. Still does today. I was, and, I was very, I was very blown away by that. And so, given that, I've had a lot of people come back that owned a David Powers Homes. We're building one in Pearland right now, where this is the fourth home that they've had with us. Wow! And uh, they finally decided to buy a lot because we didn't have a position down there. They would bought a lot, and we're building the home for them right now. So it's a lot of our previous home buyers that we sold over the year. We would have delivered a little over 3,000 homes over the years, and a lot of those people are coming back and purchasing the build on your lot. That's a great testimony. You know, that's something that I'm Joe marketing guy for our company, I, so I, I'm, I'm always focused on the customer experience. And you said two things that really kind of struck me from that sense of going out and sitting down with your buyers to talk to them about what they would like to see in your product moving forward. And from a genuine connection standpoint, there, there's just so much value in that in creating an experience for the buyer that is powerful for, for them. But another thing that I thought was really interesting about the courtyard thing, uh, you know, even for myself as a homeowner and, and looking at the experience that I'm trying to create for my family, my wife and I, the time we spend together and all that sort of thing, the whole car- courtyard idea, um, where part of the, the experience of a home is that, that impression of walking in. The, the first impression you get is the statement you're making about your home. And so that's the, where the foyer has become such an expensive area of the house. It's a neat idea to me to take that and say, how can we approach it from a, a practical standpoint that makes a more cost-effective approach at still creating an, a, an impression or experience when, when you first touch that house? That was really kind of neat to me. Uh, and it, it's a very usable approach to creating that experience. I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling on well, that. Thank was, you, Joe. I like that <laughs> yeah. idea. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Joe, one of the things you have to go do is you got to go see his model home. Yeah. And uh, you got to go see the model home at Lakes of Elaterra where it has that entry into a courtyard, even on their, their, their big home, their estate, their estate series right there. And let me tell you, it's absolutely amazing to walk into this courtyard that is not only a beautiful sitting area that you can sit down and enjoy with an outdoor a fireplace, etc. But it's a great way to go in. And literally, when you walk in, I, I'm a testament to this, you can look northeast, southwest, and see the home as well. Yeah. So it's really neat to be able to see the way that's been put together I, I, I and the just, functionality about it. I just snapped to why that became a relevant point in my head. Because as everybody here on the show knows, except for our guests, they're trying to get me to buy a new house. 
and my <laughs> wife is trying to get me to buy a new house. And she listens to every show. So every time we talk about new we're, houses. We're, we're working on them, Kim. Yes, we're he's acknowledging on them. it now at least, by so, the way. Uh, um, I, I'm picturing, that's why I just thought about it. I'm picturing the idea of the uh, the courtyard and all that sort of thing. That would be something I'd be looking for in a, in a home. So that that's... that's well, Joe, come out, come out and see us, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Part of my philosophy always has been is that I only live in one home. Every other one I build for somebody else, so I've always had a pretty close attachment to the home buyer. And it's amazing how how well-directed your thoughts become mm-hmm. when you visit with the home buyer and how targeted your product becomes for the market you're trying to serve. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you find it, part of the trends that people are not really buying a home, but they're buying lifestyles now? Oh, We've yeah. talked about this quite a bit. Is that you know this is where I'm gonna you know it used to be people are, are using the home as a central place to, to sleep at night, but now everyone's coming back to the home. There's those huge entertainment areas, and the, we see the trend is that they're looking for a lifestyle. And as a segue into the, the next question I had was about surround sound systems. Are you including those with your builds where they're they're putting this magnificent oh, surround on, sound, yeah, yeah. big screen TVs? Yes, them, or? most definitely. The media rooms are all equipped. They're pre-wired as a standard feature, and then the people choose the media selection of equipment. Some of them have their own equipment, some of them add it. And in the great rooms, we all we have surround sound in those. Then we have speakers nearly in every every room except the secondary bedrooms, but the master bedroom, and they're all home run back to a center area where you can put a tuner in there and run the music through the home. The other thing, just a simple little thing that I learned from that is the flat screens. And Really, the buyers didn't tell me, but all of our homes are now flat screen comparable. So on the wall, 72 inches off the floor, we have a plug. You have a Smurf tube there that goes down to where the connection is so you can have your TV either in a, on a piece of furniture or you can put the flat screen up on the wall. Smurf tube. Am- yeah, amazing. <laughs> I hadn't it's heard a, that term before, but that's for uh, ru- running all your li- line wires. Right. And stuff. All well, the I, wires. I immediately gathered what that would be for, a smurf tube. <laughs> so so the, wi- the no, there's no wires exposed. The other thing uh, I well, do is... Well, that's why I meant you're running through that, through that all tube. My, all my front doors now are 3.6 wide. And the reason I went from 3.0 to 3.6, kind of a simple thing, is furniture is all designed around a 3-foot opening. Appliances are designed around a 3-foot opening. And after people live in a home for 10 years, it's amazing how those door jams get tore up uh, from yeah. people just going in and out with things. So now all my doors are three six wide to give them the ease of going in and out. Well, that's a great that's something nice I just seen as I'd walk in and out of these homes, and you say, "Got to fix that." You know, what's your biggest challenge out there? I think probably today it, it varies in home building. You know, today it's probably as we talked a little bit ago. It's the source of labor, it's source of material availability, and things like that. Home site availability. But uh, those are good kind of problems they have. I'll take them any day of the week. Yeah, because we remember the past. And, I know, yeah. and, you, and you were building back in the 80s, too, so you, you've you survived two downturns, two right. major downturns that I'm aware of. So anyway, uh, Chris, you look like you're about to – you're on the precipice. No, no, you know, you know I, I'm absolutely fine. You know, it's, it's so much fun to sit here and talk because there's so many good things. I was, as you mentioned, you know, David's been around building a long time. And, you know, and, and he's truly one of the good individuals in the business and in the industry. If you're out there looking for a home, I strongly suggest go out there. If you're looking to build it on your own lot, if you're out there looking at the Bellaterra area, look up David. Go out there and just see the styles that he's building in his home. It's absolutely amazing. You know what's other? What, what else is amazing is how fast time flies on the first segment. We are up against a break right now, but All stay right. tuned, and we'll be right back. What a world. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And we are back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Show. Remember, we have some great minds in the studio. We want to hear from you. If you have a question about buying a home, about a new home, about trends, what's going on, give us a call, 800-808-5548. We're here to answer that, and one of the things we tell everybody all the time is if you don't ask, you'll never know. So <laughs> That's exactly right. And, and we can't have a show that's all guys. That's just not the Rat Pack. No. So. Not at all. We, not we, at all. We, made that, we made that mistake one weekend. It was way once. too much testosterone in the room. Yeah, I've never stopped talking about that since. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Well, we have with us Gayla Gayden, again, she's with the Top Mark team with Keller Williams Signature. Welcome again. Hello. And I know that you do a lot of new home sales. Kind of talk about when you work with clients and customers and take them to a new home. Where does that start? What kind of conversation you have with them when you're kind of tutoring them in, in the process? Well, when I have a client coming to me, the first thing I ask is, do you have children? Uh, what do you want out of a neighborhood? Some people want property with a lot of land, and some people want that community that has everything, the shopping centers, the movie theaters, everything for that child for them to not drive out of the subdivision. So it kind of each person's individually kind of on their own. Are you getting people pretty sensitive? Driving in Houston is not one of my favorite things to do, but I do know people commute. You work a lot out in the Katy, Richmond Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. But I, but I know you're Gala out there. Gala is everywhere, everywhere, by the way. The omnipotent uh, Gala. Um, but, but I'm very sensitive to driving, and I always like to make it e- easier. In fact, if I'm going to be far out, I want to be going counter to traffic. Do you see a lot of people making decisions of that, or do they make a decision like, this is my lifestyle, and I'm willing to, to fight the traffic? Well, like there's some of my clients that become good friends. They say, well, my might be an hour drive, but by the time I get home, I returned all my phone calls, and I can do what I want to do at home. And then there's the other ones that want to be there at work in 10 minutes and ride their bicycles. And, and then when they go grocery store, they fight traffic everywhere they go. So each one has got their own little ways. You know, the crazy thing about to me about traffic is that in Houston, I would never buy a house around traffic because it can change tomorrow. They can decide to, you know, throw some road under construction, and it's going to be under construction for the next five years, and it'll be a nightmare there. So I'm, I'm kind of same attitude. I listen to a lot of audio books, so uh, when I've got drive time, I'm just listening to books, and off I go, and returning phone calls and whatnot. So but, traffic but, doesn't enter my mind anymore. This is why you need to work with a really good realtor, because... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and Gala is certainly one of those, and that they will good realtors will know what's going on in the area. If there's going to be a, a new, new thoroughfare, or they're going to be tearing up things for years. Most good we'll realtors warn are, you. Yeah, they <laughs> warn you ahead of time that, that this is about to happen. Because remember when the West Park went in, it was oh kind my, of a, it was kind of unwieldy. So let's talk about lifestyles. And you were talking to David a minute ago about lifestyles, and you're kind of broaching on that subject that they are looking at lifestyles when they get home. What are they asking for? They say, you know, Gail, I've got to have this in my home. I mean, what are those items? Well, when they say that, the first thing they tell me, they want to walk in that door and have that pal look or that wow look. They like high ceilings. They Now women want their own vanities. They don't want to share a vanity with I their husband. I don't want to share a vanity with a woman <laughs> myself. <laughs> so you're seeing a lot, God, no. a lot of those <laughs> Seeing double vanities going away. You're seeing the master bathroom is a woman's retreat. You know, give me my nice tub and give me my nice little glass of red wine that evening and life will be good. Hey, now, you know, so. my wife says, she's like, you're more of a woman than I am when it comes to the bathtub. I'm like, man, I want to have the nice, you know, layout and everything in the bathroom. I, you know, I am going 100 miles per hour all day, every day. And I enjoy that hot bath, I think, just as much or more than she does. So, you know, you got to watch out for the guys you're like not, me. I got two now. Gender, well, well, you're wait, probably you, percenters. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are changing, too, because now I'm getting people wanting body showers. I um, need to mention now that, uh, you know, I'm going to pick up my chainsaw at uh, Home Depot after the show. So, uh, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> Anyway, so but the body showers uh, yeah. you're saying, so yeah, yeah. you're also seeing some things that are more, you know, and that's what I've actually been seeing a lot. Is you see, you're really seeing that both women and men have their certain features. For example, the man caves, and and exactly. as they were saying they want to have certain things. One of the things I've seen a lot more than I ever have before are some of these garages that you could actually live in nowadays. I mean, I see individuals <laughs> the making workshop. the, the now, workshops. Now we're right? talking. Yeah. See, see yeah. I right. really want a, I want a garage with a house attached. Right. Not, not, <laughs> not the other way around. You know. See, that's, that, there's another unfortunate one because I want that, but my wife has commandeered the garage, and that's where she keeps, like, everything under the sun. Well, I know, uh, you know, our I have get, a, little corner. a couple of our guests here build houses with three and, three, <laughs> three and four car garages. Is, is yes. that true? I, you know, I need a whole basement for her stuff you know she can have take over the that area anyhow so <laughs> yeah we do get a little silly on the show you may know uh, but okay so they're buying lifestyle what, what else they look for you know talk about outdoor kitchen are they saying i want that part of the, the package oh, now or are they going to oh, do it after the fact oh or? i've had some builders i had to kind of stomp and scream at them you got everything gorgeous but where's my doggone patio it might be a hundred degrees in texas and we might have an air conditioning outside but we want that daggum covered patio that's all there's to it 
Well, you yeah. know, on those those evenings where it does get down and you know, drop down to the you know, like eighty eight. Right, right. Well, you know, we have an outdoor things... fan and, outdoor, and, a, and a cool drink in your hand. It's comfortable. Well, well, I, well, you know, one of the things if you look at it, you know, if you look at Texas and our makeup right now, and I can say this because I grew up in Mexico all my life, is it was nothing for us to spend all day out in the hundred degree weather in Mexico. I mean, nothing whatsoever, right? So you it's look a, at it's you, a dry heat, though. right? It's a dry heat. It's, even if it's a wet heat's actually better. But let me tell you, here in here in Texas now, if you look at what we have here in Houston, we have a lot of Latin Americans that live here. We have a lot of foreigners that live here in general. Being out in the heat is nothing new. In fact, being in 88 degrees at nighttime, and so that's when. But what we enjoy doing is spending it with family, with the barbecues, out in the in the yards, and so that's why we see a lot of individuals now are asking for those outdoor living areas, whether it be a covered patio or an outdoor kitchen or a courtyard or, or a or courtyard, court. as you mentioned. That's very very popular, and a lot of it has to do with the type of individuals that Texans are becoming because of our international flair that well, we have. Well, I'm one of those strange people who likes to go out during the thunderstorm and sit outside and watch it. Oh, no, me <laughs> too. Oh, no. Oh, so. I, I have to wonder now, a friend of mine and I were talking about this a couple days ago and said, you know, it was nothing for us as kids to come in with that dirt ring. You know, it's like, you know you had a, a good day outside as a kid when you came in with a dirt ring around your neck and your arms and everything else. That was normal. It's like, our kids now, they're like, they don't nev- they never know what we're talking about. Xboxes, so... I wonder, right. you know, now that generation, my generation, we're, we're going up, so we want to be outside with the uh, courtyard and the, the fire pit and everything else, because that's how we grew up as kids, I think, maybe. Well, I wonder if we'll be growing up with an entertainment, the uh, media room will be outside. Oh, well, I was thinking that you have, you have an Xbox connection in your courtyard, right, or right, something right. like that. The outdoor when our kids grow up, you know. <laughs> so. Well, I've actually seen some where they put an outdoor theater. They'll have a big screen. They, evidently, there's some that are water resistant or waterproof, and they'll put them out there in the patio. And the wife's pushing them out yeah, there. I, 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 yeah, and that might be true. It might be like, yeah, please leave. All that screaming uh, and hollering at you know, I, I draw time. the line. I go outside and just to escape all that stuff personally. But I'm of a gen- different generation. But, but you, know, you know, one of the things we're talking about lifestyle, and Gayla, we were talking about this during the, one of the breaks, is what they're also looking for, especially the individuals with families, they're looking at other aspects, amenities in the community, schooling. How is that really playing an influencing factor nowadays? Well, people want their children to have that, like, I'm old, okay, but they still want that where that child can go outside, grab their bicycle, and drive their bike over across the couple of streets and know they're safe. Uh, I see so many kids now playing in the football fields, playing football or baseball, where it used to be for a while I didn't see that. And now with these master communities, you're seeing more kids out there playing and their parents out there playing, and it's kind of neat. Well, you know, let me tell you one thing. Let me correct you on one thing, and I correct Rob on this all the time. You're not old. You're well-seasoned. <laughs> Very big difference right there because uh, Rob says that to me all the time. Uh, but, but, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, one of the things that we see is a lot of the communities, and, and, and you probably talked to this as well, the amount of amenities that are nowadays going into a community. It used to be it was just, you know, a small clubhouse and a pool. And now you're seeing – then it, it converted to a small clubhouse, a pool, and a workout kid section. Workout rooms. And now and it's workout rooms. Now it's uh, baseball fields. Now it's kid pools separate from the main pools. I mean, you're seeing a lot of that development going on. You're seeing a lot of the master plan communities, I would imagine, making those changes to sort of just accommodate that new growing trend that we're seeing in the well, industry. Well, families are getting close again. For a while, families were – the mom did her thing. The dad did his thing. Now it's – Everybody does things together. So with that, we've got to have the things for them to do. I would well, And you know agree. what? Uh, this kind of gets on a, a deep level of psychological stuff, but maybe it's an intuitive thing that people are realizing. But from a the way the brain works, the more hurdles there are in between you and the, the, the goal that you're trying to do, the less likely you are to do it. So when, when I have to... Uh, get in the car and drive down to the gym, it, that automatically creates an extra hurdle. Whereas if I can run out the door and run down the street, to a gym, I'm much more likely to do it. Uh, so whether it's intuitive or whatever, if it, whether it's you, you builders being smart and putting that together, I don't know. But it definitely makes sense from how we work as human beings that if we can incorporate that into our, our environment, the place where we spend time with the family, the place where we work out and all that in our community, it makes it a lot easier to access and, and to uh, enjoy. Well, I would absolutely agree. And one of the things I wanted to ask Gayla as well, this is about Top Mark Realty and about your team. You know, you... Most people don't realize this. You are a very big agent in some of the closeout with a lot of the builders, especially some of the closeout areas right there. You know, what are you seeing from a builder? Where are you seeing the builders move to right now? What are you seeing some of the trends from your side of things that builders are starting to do in regards to the communities they're moving into or, or where the trend might be going in the future? 
Well, it's really that master planning with everything for that family to do. It's just uh, shopping centers, uh, everything. Everybody wants everything close, but really the highways too, because there are some areas that you've got West Park Tow Road, you've got I-10, you've got 59, you've got, you got 90 where you can get anywhere. So also choose those highway locations those yeah. builders are looking for. That West Park Tollway made a huge difference for that community out there because once that's opened up, oh, you know, wow. and all those areas just... Think oh, and Fulcher's <laughs> booming. Just, yeah, yeah, I mean, if, if you look at it right now, they've actually already got the plan in place. I think they start in January, the extension of the West Park Tollway from basically 99 out to, you know, past 723, right right, right before Cross Creek Ranch. But if you look at what's going on in Fulcher, for example, I mean, Fulcher is just a booming community right now. Where it was a sleepy community five years ago? Well, Houston, everywhere was sleepy. We just <laughs> they just shook the Sleeping Beauty up and out. We're here. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a fact. It's it's something that's it's fascinating to me. A lot of other cities around the United States, there was I've read about uh, people returning to the city and coming back into the downtown areas, but yet. Houston, such a strange animal to me in that sense, in that we've created downtowns all around the city. Yeah, we're a, we're a big little town. I mean, it, it is just geographically, it's just huge. We were talking, Matthew and I, and he's going to be up in the next me- segment, about how the center of Houston has shifted out so far west. So Everything's city changed. Center, <laughs> city center is now being considered the center of the city. That is the new, in fact, yeah, it was considered yeah. the new center of the Houston about 10 years ago when I spoke with the city planner, actually. is the, Actually, Taylor's being the corner of Gessner and I-10 is really considered the new center of Houston. That's North east, southwest, crazy. you can reach any place in 30 minutes. Yeah. Imagine that. You know, we're coming up against a break again. Well, so well, we love our sponsors. Though. We love our sponsors. We have to give them their time, but we'll be right back. <laughs> object like me you can bet as sure as you live something's gotta give something's gotta welcome back to the real estate rat pack radio show with chris joe and rob the crew is taking your calls so dial in at 1-800-808- Five five four eight, and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is entirely too much fun. I'm really excited about our our next guest up here is Matthew Gertis. He is the president of the Perry Homes Division. Welcome once again. Oh, well, thank you. Good morning. And so we're kind of on this subject. Where we're talking about trends and stuff. And Perry is a big, big builder, very successful, has survived the ups and the downs. How many subdivisions are y'all building in right now? We've got 24 subdivisions listed in Houston. You know, subdivisions are constantly coming on and going off. So when you have so much going on, it, that is a uh, moving number. But right now on our website, we've got 24 subdivisions in Houston and kind of surrounding areas. We've got another five subdivisions in the San Antonio area, so San Antonio, New Braunfels, Seguin. So we've really diversified quite a bit. You know, I, I like to think about Houston. Earlier we were talking about, hey, what are people looking for? Well, Different people are looking for different type of subdivisions. You know, they're looking for something special, and we've diversified into all the different things. So, if you're looking for, say, a townhouse, a, you know, an upscale townhouse product, we've got something going on in the woodlands. If you're looking for a big master plan community, you know, we're in the, the Alianas and the Siena plantations and the Riverstone, so you have that. We've got some communities that we've developed ourselves, so kind of a smaller or mid-sized community like uh, South Lake or Creekmont. So, there's a number of different things that we're doing. We're even kind of in town where we'll buy house and build a new house at that location. So whatever you're looking for, I feel that we've done a pretty good job of diversifying and we've got that out there. Uh, I always recommend go to our website, go to perryhomes.com and you can look on there. It's got a real nice map. So what you're looking for, you're going to find on there. And so you can click on that map. You can see the prices. You can see, hey, you know, I'm looking for something in this part of town or, you know, kind of like you guys were saying earlier, I want to be close to my work. Well, we've probably got something close to your work or I want to be close to this activity or this school or these schools or whatever you're looking for. We probably have something in that area. So if you go on, you know, like I said, perryhomes.com, we've got a lot of that. And it just gives a lot of opportunity for people to find exactly what they're looking for. You know, actually, if they go out, if you have an iPad, I was talking about this on the break. If you have an iPad, you have an incredible iPad app. Actually, you can go right to the, you know, the app store and download it for free right there has everything and actually is, runs really fast in regards to what you can look at. I'll have to download that. 
Yes. Oh, that's that's right. We're really excited about the app, so you can download it. It's great on your iPad. It is free, and then you're able to access almost all or if not all the information that is on perryhomes.com. You can look at the different subdivisions. You can look at the plans that we have and then look at options. Maybe you want to make some tweaks or whatever. We have different things available. The iPad app is a really great feature to do that. You mentioned right here, Perry has a little bit for everyone, and I like that, by the way. You've been talking a little bit about what David did in his product model right now. You know, one of the things I want to maybe switch back to right now is Perry also is very well known. You've got products out there for a first-time home buyer and or a buy-up home buyer. What are you seeing in those areas? How are you seeing those markets coming along right now? We're seeing good movement really in all markets. I mean, thankfully, it's a great market, and hopefully it stays this way. We expect it to from everything we've seen. Our in-town product that we're doing, where we're building single-family homes, more of an in-town, you know, those prices can be up in the 800s and up from there, or you can come in slight below that if you don't want to do as much. So I think that there's a lot of activity in that price point. We're seeing interesting things. So in our larger communities, say more suburban communities, so maybe seeing a plantation, 80, 85-foot we're seeing buyers buying, maybe they're empty nesters, and they're buying a large one-story. So maybe they had a 6,000-square-foot house before, and now they want to downsize, if you will, <laughs> and so they're buying a 4,000-square-foot one-story. So they still have all the things that they enjoyed before. You know, they've kind of grown accustomed to a number of things, but they can downsize, have that one-story home, so, you know, they're not going up and down stairs. It's got everything they need, you know, in that size. So you're still going to have your game room. You're still going to have your dramatic elevation. We looked at our one-stories. We're kind of known for one-stories. We do a wide variety of one-story plans, and we're known for that, not just in the large plans, but in all sizes. And so we've really studied the one-stories and said, hey, what is it that a two-story plan has that a one-story doesn't have? And we've tried to incorporate a lot of those things. One of the things is a two-story has more curb appeal. It has a more elegant elevation elevation, and generally speaking, than, say, a one-story. So to address that, what we've done is we've raised the roof pitches or just made the gables and the top of the house really sore as you're looking at it. And, you know, we've done a lot of things with stone and stone and brick combinations and everything. But if you look at one of our one-stories, they're, in many cases, as tall from the front as a two-story home next door. Wow. And so you get all the advantages of the one-story with the two-story look. And then, depending on the size of the home and the particular layout you're looking for, we have a lot of one-stories that have the game room. A lot of people want the two-story because there's a game room upstairs. That, hey, I want my kids to be able to go to a game room. Right. Well, our one-stories will have a game room. And we may have a room that we've set up as a library, but it's kind of a flex room. You could use it as a theater room or you know whatever a play room for your kids whatever you want to use it for but the one story has become so popular now just because you have downsizers like it or empty nesters like it because you don't have to mess with stairs younger families like them because if you have people visiting they don't have to go up and down stairs and people that like to entertain really like the one stories the advantage of it is if you have a two story my experience is it splits up your party you're going to have uh, probably all the men upstairs in the media room or the uh, theater room <laughs> watching watching the game and then you might have myself because I like to eat or the women downstairs kind of around the uh, uh, kitchen area talking. And so it, it divides out the party. And so with a one story, people can go in their own room. They have the spaces. You still have the rooms, but you're still able to entertain and every, everybody be there. Kind of along those same lines, what we've seen a lot is with the two-story homes that we're building, in many cases, we're putting two bedrooms downstairs. So that way, you've got your master and you've got another room if you're having guests or like David was saying, if you have multi-generations living in, in a house or whatever, there's more than one bedroom on the first floor. So that's really popular with people, and we've seen people kind of gravitating towards that. Well, I'll tell you, you sold Rob and I on a two-story, though, because if all the men are going upstairs, Rob and I would probably be downstairs. With the, with, with the women. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> but, I, but I've got to tell you. I'm, in true Rat Pack fashion. Uh, I, uh, I've been collecting one-story plans for about 20 years, and I've got a lot of Fairy plans in my portfolio and stuff like that, but I've always preferred a one store because you actually use more of the house. And I had built a big antebellum mansion for myself out in, in uh, Glenwood back in, in Richmond, and I've realized I never went upstairs. I mean, I didn't. If I had guests, right. they went upstairs. And so I, when I then I moved into a one story house, I used more of it. Right. And you don't you have a lot of dead space with stairs, and it's just easier uh, living. Some, and I live in a two-story townhouse now, and I'm looking for one story. Well, and the one Does thing the... I tell everybody is go out there and look at a Perry home. One of the things, because I visit model homes all the time, and I love a Perry home, is the openness of your one stories are just absolutely amazing. I mean, you walk in, you've got these beautiful open areas. So from a family perspective, it's great to be able to see everything. From an entertainment perspective, it's a great thing to be able to see everyone that you've got in your home. And you're right. I mean, a couple of times I've walked up and said, oh, this has to be one of their two stories. I walked in. It's really not. It is a one-story home. 
that has that that facade though of looking a lot bigger on the outside. And I have a question for you about the uh, the. Yes, there is one story available, and <laughs> and you and Kim can grab and look at it this afternoon. As a matter map, of there's fact, there's plenty of them out there. I had, Sales I, consultants I are had standing to, by. I had to get that in. <laughs> that was for you, Kim. Uh, yes. Oh, God, I'm always in trouble when I go home after these. You know, I'm, 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 the heat is on. That's right. The question I had was this, and I'm, and I'm sure price point would affect this, but with a one-story home, how much does that affect lot size? And we're talking about trends of outdoor cooking and all this sort of thing areas. Do you find with a one-story home, is that absorbing more of the lot? Is there less space for the outdoor entertainment stuff? Or well, how does of course, that look? Of course, a one-story is going to have a, a, a bigger slab area than, say, a two-story of the same square footage. But right. what you have to do is just right-size the home for the lot. So you want to make sure you've got the right lot for the home. A lot of our communities have very deep lots. We've got some amazing lots in Siena Plantation or in Cross Creek Ranch. You know, they've, they've got the deeper lots, so we don't have an issue with that. The outdoor entertaining is so important. Almost every home we're building now usually ends up getting a uh, covered patio. We've kind of been maximizing the size of those covered patios, so we're going larger and larger with the covered That's patio. Cool. People are really responding well to that. We have uh, our own team of architects and our own team of site planners, and uh, I personally look at uh, every home that's going on a lot that's going on in our division, and so does every other division president. So we're looking at all those things, and we're trying to maximize the yard. You know, we want to set the house so it has the best yard, and people have that ability. So I think it is important. I think people enjoy the covered patio because it just stretches out the house, kind of like Chris was talking about. We have a real open concept in our house. Well, we're talking about trends. People are gravitating, in our view, to a a more open concept. That's what people really enjoy. And what we've done is we truly try to maximize the windows. We put as much natural light in the home as we can get. So we our windows start, you know, down close to the floor. They're pretty tall or seven feet tall or whatever. And then we put another window called a transom above that window. So we've just got, in many cases, we've just got windows throughout the house. And what it does is it just bathes the house in natural light. And it does several things for you. Number one, you don't have to run your lights if you don't want to. But it makes it feel just real open and airy. And that's what people, a lot of times they can't put their finger on it. But what it is is all the natural light that we put into the home. You know, in the past, years ago, people would be concerned about the windows because, well, hey, is this home going to be energy efficient with all these windows? But now we've made so yeah. many strides in energy efficiency that that we can have all those windows and not have an issue with efficiency. I was just going to comment on that. I'm like, you know, my house was built in uh, 91, and it's very open and airy. <laughs> and consequently, it gets about 80 degrees in there in the middle of summer and with the A.C. running full, you know, nonstop because it's got those n- nice, cheap, you know, single-pane glasses and, well, uh, they've got one waiting for you that's come got along. Uh, that's right. uh, insulated windows. <laughs> and it's probably that's like one my inventory. biggest motivating factor right there is the, is the massive energy inefficiency of my uh, nice open airy windows that I have. <laughs> Which is kind of a good, nice segue to ask. What kind of uh, sear ratings do you use in your air conditioning? So we use a 16 sear. You know, I wouldn't recommend going with anything less than that. The HVAC system is the single biggest draw of electricity in your home. So we use a 16 sear, and that way it's an extremely efficient HVAC system, and it really keeps your electric bill down. The other things that we do is, like we were talking about with the windows, they're low-E, double-plane glass, vinyl windows. You know, in the past, people would use aluminum windows. and uh, that's a great conduit of heat. That's right. That, that metal would just let the heat in and out. And now with the low-E glass, the vinyl windows, it's funny, our windows, the windows that you can open, you can flip it open so that you can clean the outside of the window from inside the house if you want to. But I like to do that and just feel how hot it is on the outside and how cool it is on the inside. It's amazing the efficiency of the home. And so that's now so like the radio show, how hot it is outside, yeah. how cool it is right yeah, here in the studio, right. let me tell you. <laughs> you know, but speaking of cool, we are coming up against a break right now. So we're going to continue this conversation right afterwards. The next segment, by the way, is going to be sort of an open mic segment. We're going to have everybody talking about everything associated with new homes in Houston. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. And it keeps it tough, out of sight, you know when that shark bite. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Radio Show with Chris, Joe, and Rob. The crew is taking your calls, so dial in at 1-800-808-5548. And welcome back to the Real Estate Rat Pack Show. You know, time flies when you're having fun, and let me tell you, we have some great minds in the studio, and we're having a great time talking about new homes in Houston. Absolutely. And, of course, we were talking about energy, so I kind of opened this up to everybody. And when you get clients and customers 
Is that one of the top things they're asking about nowadays? I think that people are very interested in it. It's been, energy efficiency has been in the, the market for quite some time. Now what, what really people look to is they go to the HERS score. It's an acronym for Home Energy Rating System, and it's kind of like a, a miles per gallon for your car. So there's a HERS rating, and that rating will tell how efficient your home is. The lower that rating is kind of like a golf score. The lower that rating is, the better. And so that kind of encompasses everything that's going on in the home, and you can look at that HERS rating and know the efficiency of the home. We're focused on that. We want to make sure we are running a very, or we are building a very efficient home. All of our homes, doesn't matter how big it is, doesn't matter what the size, how many windows are in it, all of our homes are 70 or less. So they're going to be a a very efficient home, and some of them can be quite a bit under that number, but at a minimum or maximum, however you want to look at it, 70 is, is the most. And so everything will come in underneath that so that we know we have that efficiency. The way you get to the efficiencies is really what we were talking about earlier. It's uh, we make sure there's you know you've got the vinyl low E glass double pane windows. You've got the high high sear HVAC system. Tech Shield in the attic is obviously very common. We're putting that in every one of our homes. The you know I mentioned sear rating. I don't know if everybody understands what that means, but kind of like miles per gallon, the higher a sear is, the more efficient your HVAC system is. So 16 sear is more efficient than say a 15 sear, which is less efficient right. and draws more. And efficient. anything's yeah. more efficient than Joe's home apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, David, are you seeing the same things when people come in? One of their big concerns is is efficiency. I think so. As Matthew has said. They're interested in those HERS scores. They have a better understanding of energy efficiency, and you know they're looking for evidence of that sometimes where the realtor will ask for utility bills. on. So we track that in our neighborhood so we can give it, and we too would be try to be 65 or below on the HERS score. And SEER rating, we use the same 16 SEER program and do offer as an option the two-speed 16 SEER, and some people upgrade to that. We also offer the foam insulation, and some people upgrade to that. So, and, and let's talk about that foam. It's a, it's a spraying type of insulation, right, that doesn't shift and things like that over the years? Yeah, like really the value, you have to use the open cell, but the value of it is really when you blow it between the rafters, you'll see a differential temperature where the attic is about 10% hotter than the rest of the home. You know, you take the number of units on the seven, let's say a 5,000 square foot home, you might have 3, 000, three units with blown in insulation and regular bad insulation, whereas that'll be dropped down to two and you'll drop about uh, four tons of air conditioning. So the operator, operating efficiency is uh, much greater. And on a home that is 5,000 square feet, you might have in July and August utility bills that are in the 150 to 175 range. Yeah. Uh, that's mind boggling to me. That's, <laughs> that, I wasn't Absolutely, yeah. The energy efficiency payback, is one of the biggest things. Payback is, you know, Four to five years, and uh, more and more people are going that direction. Well, that's amazing because I don't even want to tell you what my electrical bill yeah, is. I, I, I think about efficiency every time I get that electric. You know what's I don't amazing? Think I've seen $150 energy bill in December, let alone uh, the middle of summer. So. Well, you know what's amazing? I, I'm going to tell you this is a testament to one of David Powers' homes. I never forget on his model there in Bellaterra one time, I, I walked over there, it's about a year ago, and he says, You want to see something really neat? And I said, Yeah. He said, Go upstairs and walk through the attic, right? And so I'm used to the attic being a normal walk-in attic, has a little space here. I could walk the entire home upstairs, yeah, but standing you're, up. Yeah, but you're only like five seven. Yeah, or something. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, so but, <laughs> but I could walk the entire thing standing up. And let me tell you, it was a hundred degree weather outside. It, still in that attic, didn't feel anything more than about seventy five or eighty. And I think that's a testament to also. Some of the, I was talking about the ratings and the insulation that you're doing in the home. Well, I think Matthew said, particularly on the one stories and on the two stories, we see much higher ceiling height, and people are just not enamored by a pull down ladder for a 10 foot ceiling or greater. So the walk in attic feature where they can store their Christmas decorations and things like that, where they can walk right out in the attic, is a real important feature. Something that I also learned when I went around and met with the home buyers. You know, they're, they're not enamored by those pull down ladders. I, I could have tested that. Our Christmas tree has been stored in the garage now for about the last six years because I didn't feel like trying to get it up in the attic anymore. So it, it about killed me well, the last time I tried to get it up there. Here is another and motivation to, to get that new house. You don't <laughs> you have to. You just keep walking into those. Yes, you just get. <laughs> now, now, Gayla, you, you work with, I mean, you, you're a top producer out there in the, all over Houston. And what's the biggest concern in energy efficiency when you're working with a co- client or customer? They want to know how high that electric bill can go. I've got customers that call me up and say, Gayla, something's wrong. My house is 4,000 square feet. My electric bill is $90. What's wrong? $90? <laughs> yeah, during the hot summer, I said, it's because you've got a good energy efficient home. You've got, 
it's still so good today that n- nobody went to buy an older home unless they've been changed. Yeah, it's, it's hard to retrofit for, for insulation because, like, oh, you know, you get in those areas where the sheet rock, you can't slap in spray in foam or anything like that. So you retrofitting's know, tough. You know, I, I read a book uh, years ago called The Millionaire Mind, and it was a study of millionaires around the United States and all this, and their typical behaviors and the, the cars they buy and the houses they buy and that type of thing. And at the time I read this, this is probably 10 years ago, it was common for millionaires to buy homes, older homes in well-established neighborhoods because they had a predictable growth rate in their value. But you know, I'm really, you know, that, early on that set my mind about the type of house I bought because I was bu- I bought based on that idea. I, was, I bought an area where the prices were known, the growth was known, that sort of thing. But there are values now in new homes that I don't think that that data incorporated. And just, yeah. just that alone, the electric bill, you have to add in a, a couple hundred dollars on an older home Easily. just because of the darn electric and bill. You, you got to understand Texas. they made the million dollars by selling those books, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he, he, th- that guy, I don't know, totally separate. It was a great book, great, not knocking it. But uh, genuinely, I look at my house and the house I'm in, I, my electric bill during the, the summer times, it frequently hits $300 plus dollars, and that's just normal to me. Whereas she's talking about a, a $90 electric bill, and I'm just that alone, that's a couple hundred dollars in the budget that, hey, a couple hundred bucks in savings, that's significant. You know, I mean, when you can add $200 to the savings account every month versus throwing that at an electric bill, that's a definite consideration in long-term buying. To me, it is anyway. So it would be cheaper for you to buy a new home than stay in <laughs> one you have? Is that, is that what you're telling me? <laughs> oh, God. Matthew, you're my oh, new hero. I love I that. knew I was going to take a pounding <laughs> yeah, on this absolutely. show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you, you just got through telling Kim the reason why you need to buy a new home. Right? Yeah, yeah, you just justified She's, it for yourself. Absolutely. Uh, one of the questions I get this time of year is people say, well, you're, everything's slowing down now. We're going into the holidays. Are you seeing that out there? Anybody? Uh, no. It's gotten to be so difficult to find homes that my agents are out and about. Like Mary, she'll call me up and say, Gail, I know you just put the house on the market. Is it there? I said, Mary, I've got three contracts. You better hurry up and get me another one before I go and talk to that seller. Well, let's talk about your team a little bit. How many people on your team? (laughs) (laughs) You lost count. But I told you I I I wasn't going to ask any hard questions. There was a brand new picture that came out the other day, and I I counted, I think it was like 13 to 16 people on your team now. it's all family, family. I mean, we want to do things that are right for our buyers and our sellers. And so everybody that works for our team has that things to do the right thing. And one biggest thing is when they're buying a new home, you won't believe how many times i got to make that buyer understand we need to do inspections on that home. Even though it's a brand new home, doesn't mean things aren't done accidentally not right. Yeah, right. And, and saying family, Justin is family, isn't he? Yes, he is. And our home inspector sitting in the corner here is nodding uh, you know, <laughs> yes, <it's> in agreement. <laughs> yes, you do. But it's true. It's true. I mean, I, I had three walks yesterday, and each one had no major problems, problems, but it could have if that inspector didn't catch them and the builder went and repaired it, and everything's good. Right. But if it wasn't it caught earlier, it could have gotten serious. Well, you know, and you're, you're mentioning about the market. You know, David and I were talking on the way over here about one of the things that we're seeing, I'm talking from a mortgage perspective, is usually the October, November time frame little bit of downtime, you know, not from from lack of a better word, but as Gayla was saying, it's just been booming. We've taken more applications in September for closings all of a sudden at the end of the year than we have probably in the May time frame for the summer closings. It's been absolutely tremendous, the amount of volume. And speaking with David as well, I mean, even sales from your side are still going really well. Yes, they are. They're, they're going. The problem, too, is we don't have many homes. I mean, I've been a top producer for almost 20 years. And I used to go and take a customer out, and we would go and look at maybe 20 homes in one day. And people say, golly, Gailey, you're crazy. But I'm getting to learn that subdivisions. Now maybe I've got five homes, and right. I'm done. And that's, that's pretty much what we're hearing throughout. And, of course, how, much, how many homes in inventory right now? I, you or David? We have quite a bit in inventory. The tricky part is completed inventory. They're exactly. selling so fast, it's hard to find a home that's completed. I certainly recommend to somebody, if you find a home that you love, 
buy it because it may not be there tomorrow. So we've got a number of homes in inventory in all the subdivisions all over, all around Houston. They're at different stages, so some of them, you know, maybe they're very early on, or maybe it seems like it's early on because, hey, this house just recently got sheetrock. But by the time you get through the mortgage process, which takes about 30 days typically, somewhere around there, by the time you're through that process, the house will be complete and you can move in. So don't let the fact that it's not complete, complete necessarily scare you because in many cases – you're going to need that time to, to finalize your loan anyway, and then you'll be able to move right into that home as soon as your loan is done. So we definitely believe in inventory. We put as many homes on the ground as we can. They're all different phases. Unfortunately, we're selling them so quick, it's hard to keep up. David, experience the same I thing? Agree. I agree with what Matthew's saying. I think there's a couple factors. One is the home will, is the home going to be available tomorrow, and the other is, is what's the price going to be because we see some upward mobility in pricing of from subcontractors and suppliers. So price is going to be higher and it may not be available. So. Prices are moving up, but I think that's ultimately good for buyers because once they buy, they're immediately getting equity. So uh, Absolutely. Overnight equity. Overnight equity. We well, you know time flies when you're having fun. You know, one of the things we tell everybody is we have great guests on today. You can look them all up. Number one, you can go to perryhomes.com. Is that correct? Yes, you can go to perryhomes.com. We've also got an 800 number. It's 1-800-247-3779. And David, you also have homesbydavidpowers.com. Is that correct? That's correct. And how can we reach you? 281-374-6637. That is awesome. Gayla, let us know how we can reach you if we're looking for that new home out there. Just give me a ring on my phone, 281-704-3673. Y'all come on over. I'll tell you what, and tell hello to, say hello to Justin and Mary and everybody out there. For all those listening, we appreciate it. Until next week, we're out. And you've been listening to the Real Estate Rat Pack. The question is, who's Frank, who's Sammy, who's Dean, and who's the other guy? Uh, Chris, yes, is, I'm Chris Frank. is Frank, I'm he's Dean. Dean, and I'm Sammy. Yes, he's <laughs> Dean. That right. Yeah. <laughs> so tune in to the really big show every Saturday at 9 a.m. right here on 100.7 The Word, KKHT.